I was like, you know what? I can be black for a day. Sure, why not? You know, I'll be the... I'll be the black guy that ruined it for real black guys, you know. The real black guy shows up in Ireland a week after me. Hey, there's another black guy in town. Oh, don't believe the hype. I had one last week. had a big nose and a small prick. It didn't work out at all, yeah. Barely had a prick. Looked like a little wee coon with a prick on top. Like a little... Like a little precoont is what it looked like. It looked like a... Looked like his prick was resting on a beanbag chair is what it looked like. Just... What I'm trying to say is my ball-to-shaft ratio is just off. What a, like... Somewhere there's a guy with a giant hog and tiny balls just going, I don't understand what's going on here. I've had it happen where I've been with a chick for the first time and I pull my balls out first and I see them go, ooh. You know, thinking that the hog is going to match. And then I pull out my hog and then you hear that sound from a game show when you lose, you know. Boom, 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 boom. Any uh, Filipinos in the house tonight? <clears throat> nice. Hello, welcome to the show. Are you Filipino, bro? Are you? Why didn't you make any noise? Like, because you can see that I'm here. I don't have to make noise. If you can see me, you know I'm here. What's your name? What? Bob? Bart? Mark. Oh, why did it sound like you said Bob and Bart? Bob. Bot. Mark. That doesn't even... Ma. Bob. 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 Are you doing chicken impressions right now? You... Mark. Oh my God, you've got Asian bird flu. <laughs> Have you been to the Philippines, Mark? It's nice there. I had a great time when I was there. I, uh, I like the people. They're very sweet. Don't you notice that when you're there? Everybody sings to you. Hello, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Don't touch my poet, sir. <laughs> Saudi guy, you know what I'm talking about. You own a few Filipinos back home. Don't, don't act like I'm even making that shit up. How many Filipinos in your house when you grew up? How many Filipinos did you have? Two. You see what I'm saying? He was like, I do. I had two. They were very nice people, though. I don't. I have no uh, disregard for the Filipinos. For the what? Bilibinos. <laughs> hey, Mark, when I was in the Philippines... Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm playing ping-pong with the audience right now. <laughs> and by ping-pong, I don't mean anything by that V. Uh, when I was in the Philippines, <clears throat> it, was really, uh, it was really cool. We were driving from the hotel to the, uh, to the... Sorry, from the airport to the hotel in Manila, and we're all in this big van... And there was a lady in the front seat of the van. She was from the Philippines, and she was in charge of our group. Anyway, we're driving, and I'm looking out the window, and uh, we're not moving very fast. And we actually stopped moving. But I didn't notice, because I'd never been to the Philippines, and I'm just looking out the window. And the second we stopped moving, the lady in the front seat turns to us and goes, Oh, my gut. And I look at my brother, and I go, What's wrong with her stomach? She's experiencing some sort of abdominal discomfort. She just yelled out, oh my gut. So I go, what's wrong? And she goes, look at all the tropics. And I go, I know, I love the tropics. It's beautiful, yeah. Not the tropics, the tropics. I go, no, I get it. Humidity, palm trees, oh, tropics. Not tropics, look at all the cars on the road. Oh, cars, traffic. What's wrong with your gut? She goes, not my gut. Oh, my gut. I go, why is your gut on the ceiling? <laughs> not my gut. Oh, my gut. Oh, your God. It's cute. In the Philippines, they think they have traffic problems. Have you been? Did you think they had traffic problems? Fuck no. I had just flown there from India. You're not going to impress me with your shitty traffic in the Philippines? In the Philippines, you may have a lot of cars. But there's some sort of order. 
for the most part, people will drive in their lane. They will generally stop at a red light. <laughs> India is insane. <laughs> India, we have a system called Creator Lane. <laughs> if you see an open space, take it and go. It's, the traffic never stops in India, never. And it's not like we don't have red lights. We have red lights and they mean the exact same thing. But I don't know what Indians are thinking when they're driving and they see the giant red light in the sky if they're like, look at that woman's forehead, she's huge. And they just keep going. But... Traffic never stops in India. Did you notice that? The only time traffic stops in India is if a cow is crossing the street. And a cow will cross the street. You don't need to be out in the country in India to see a cow. You could be in a city. I was in, a, I was in Bombay, in the heart of the city, and I saw a cow. In all fairness, you never see two cows together. It's always like one cow here, and then like eight blocks later, there's another cow. But that cow looks like it's looking for this cow, you know, just... Huh? 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 Anybody see my cousin? And the cows in India are skinny as shit. They're skinny. That's why we don't eat beef. It has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with common sense. There's no beef on the cow. You don't think Indian guys sit around going, Man, I really want a steak. From what? That. That's not a cow. That's a swollen goat. <laughs> and the cows are assholes in India. They are. Because they know they're safe. Nobody fucks with a cow in India. When a cow's crossing the street, that's it. Traffic stops. I was in a taxi and a cow crossed the street. My driver shut off the engine. I go, what are you doing? Saving petrol. <laughs> well, how long is this going to take? Up to her. <laughs> the cows know they're safe. Nobody honks their horn at them. Nobody pushes them. Nobody's like, come on, cow, move. <laughs> cows know they're safe. They just walk slow. <laughs> they stop and look at traffic. They even moo with an accent. Moo? Oh, moo. My family's from Calcutta. And um, <laughs> there's, there's never any more than three people from Calcutta in an audience. Because everybody's still in Calcutta, that's why. We want to leave, but we can't, you know. <clears throat> Calcutta is a trip. You see some, you see some ill shit in Calcutta. I saw. This, you, here, you see things in India that if any one of those things happened, like right here in London, the whole country would shut down. Here's what I saw. It was like four o'clock on a Friday evening, and I was in the in the in the, heart, in the heart of Calcutta, in the heart of Calcutta, right downtown. It's called Park Street. That's where everybody is. It's like being in Piccadilly Circus, like when everybody's there. And here's what I saw. I was in a taxi, right? Now, first of all, if you're in a taxi in India, you know you're not moving very fast. And at rush hour, you're not moving at all. So I'm an idiot for getting in the taxi to begin with. Because when you are in a taxi and you're not moving, people pop out of everywhere and try and sell you shit you'd never wanted ever. I'm sitting in the cab, this guy, ding, ding, ding. What? You want cauliflower? What, what, what? <laughs> when have you ever been sitting there? Oh, man, I could really go for some cauliflower right now. I and little, and it looked delicious. I'm like, no, I don't want cauliflower right now. Bouquet, bouquet. The fuck is a bouquet? Flowers, bouquet of flowers. One bouquet. Bouquet? No, I'm fine. But you want? <laughs> I 
So we're in traffic, and I look on the sidewalk, right? And let me explain something to you. The road's packed. Cars are going in every direction imaginable. People are crossing, and I look on the sidewalk. The sidewalk is packed like this. Only people are going in every direction. And I see a fucking horse. <laughs> a full-size horse walking down the sidewalk. Now let me explain something. There was nobody leading this horse. It wasn't like, come on, Fluffy, let's go home. <laughs> the horse didn't have a saddle on to suggest maybe somebody was riding it and they fell off. This was just a white horse walking through, like walking right here, like through the middle of you guys. And it was walking like it knew where it was going. It wasn't panicking, it wasn't... Like if a horse like that was seen in the middle, in the heart of downtown London, and you saw a horse walking, the horse would be panicking, and the people would go, Oh my God, a crazy horse! Even the horse would be like, People! Or whatever horses say when they're freaking out, right? And this horse was walking like it knew where it was going. It was just like... And nobody's worried about this horse. People are literally walking past the horse like this. The stupid horses here every day. <laughs> Their mother's a jackass! You see some wild shit over there. Homelessness, <clears throat> I realized, India does not have a homeless problem. Let me explain. The rest of the world has a homeless problem. England, you could say England has a homeless problem. Let me tell you why. Because the homeless people in England, at some point in their life, lived in a home. <laughs> now they no longer have a home, therefore they are actually homeless. India has generations of homeless people. They're so homeless, they don't even know what the fuck homeless is. I saw a dude sitting on the sidewalk. I go, hey man, are you homeless? He goes, no. I go, where do you live? Right here. <laughs> where does your family live? Here, here, and here. Could you please get out of my living room? I'm trying to watch the cow cross the street. A lot of poverty in India. Did you notice that there? And the, but here's the thing about the poverty in India. It's pretty extreme. However, the poor people in India are a different breed of poor people. They're not dangerous. They're not like, they're not angry that they're poor. It's, it's kind of like a beautiful poverty they have over there. In that the people, like you can walk through a poor neighborhood in India with your watch on and nobody's gonna try and take your shit. Because they're hungry. They don't want to know how long they've been hungry for. <laughs> Give me your watch. It's been 17 hours. The poor people in India have a different mentality. They don't, they don't look at you and go, one day I will have your shit. They don't do that. They kind of accept it and figure in the next life it may get better. And they know that no matter how shit their life is right now, there's somebody in a worse position right beside them. Like I saw a little kid running around with no shoes. I go, hey man, you got no shoes. He goes, that's okay, that guy's got no feet. <laughs> hey man, you got no feet. That's okay, that guy's got no legs. Until finally I reached a stump with a head and he's like, this is it. This is as bad as it gets, but at least I have my health. Could you please pick me up? Here comes the horse. <laughs> you know, you'll notice when you're walking around any major city now, um, and I notice this here even in, in, in England, which is ironic, that you find less and less people speaking English nowadays. Like even in America, I walk through any major city, and I hear people speaking every other language but English. And the fucked up thing for me is, I can only speak English. I know words in other people's languages, I know phrases, I know how to say certain things, but I can't speak anything from top to bottom other than English. And which, you know, like, like if I was to talk to you, if I was to start speaking Punjabi to you, um, I know enough to start a conversation, but then if you replied, I would just go, yeah, right? Like, that's why I've created my own language. I'd be like, oh, Kyalaji, the TikTok goes I'm like, ah, uh, but, but, but. That's what I would do. That's all I do. I've created my own language. It's called but, but. And, and then, you know, with Indian people, because we have so many dialects, they may just think, oh, I don't know that dialect of. What is Kya, but, 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 but. 
What I like to do is I like to listen to people speak another language, and then I play this game where I try to figure out what language it is, but to fuck with them in the meantime, I stare at them every now and then and smile like I know what they're saying. You should see how paranoid people get. I'm sitting at this cafe, there's these people behind me, and all I hear is, and I look at them and I go, ha, 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 ha. And they were like, we must move. This man speaks Latvian. Damn you, Rosetta Stone. <clears throat> but I always listen for like the one key word in English, you know? You ever do that? You hear somebody speak in another language and you listen for the one key word in English and then you try and piece together what they're talking about. But the funny thing is you'll hear a word that sounds like an English word but it won't mean the same thing to them. Like you'll be like, uh, I've been to go to this shopping mall. And you're like, ah, ah! They're going to a shopping mall. But then you find out that shopping mall means bread to them or something, you know? <laughs> There's always words in people's languages that'll make you laugh because it'll, it'll sound like a word in your language. Are there any Hungarian people here tonight? Really? It was just a fluke question, really. I... Do you speak Hungarian, sweetheart? What's the Hungarian word for kiss? Not choke, the other word. Pussy, right? Did you know that? That's the Hungarian word for kiss. Pussy. To us, fucking hilarious, isn't it? Pussy. Ha ha. Pussy. But to Hungarian people, very innocent. They'll be on the phone, okay, pussy, pussy. And they'll hang up. And we'll be like, ha ha, double pussy. And the only reason I know this is because I, would, uh, I was at a strip joint, you know, once. Um, researching some material um, quite extensively and uh, and my stripper she was Hungarian and I guess I was making her laugh and by the end of the night she goes uh, you were so nice I want to give you pussy and I'm like I would love to receive uh, the aforementioned pussy and she goes close your eyes and I close my eyes and all of a sudden I feel on my cheek and I'm like did she just rub her pussy on my face? Because Did... if I'd known that was going to happen, I would have done the old... Ah, ah, ah. But you'll always hear words in people's languages that remind you of words you know. Like when I was in the Philippines, I forgot that I knew the Filipino word for tits, which is susu. Now, susu just sounds funny in English, but it's even funnier for Indian people because susu is what we say to a little kid who has to go to the bathroom. What's the matter? You have to go susu. You have to go susu. Go, go susu, go susu. Nicely go, go nicely go susu. But I forgot in the Philippines that it meant tits. And when I was there, I met this chick and she's like, so, do you want to see my susu? And I'm like, no. Flush it. Oh my god, you're so kinky. <laughs> but susu is one of those funny Indian words, you know? All Indian people know the word susu. You know susu, don't you? I'm looking right at you, buddy. Yeah. No, 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 we've passed, we've moved on from pre on these. Uh -huh. You know what I'm talking about, right? Here's the funny thing about the word susu, is that uh, to Indian people it's pee, and to Filipino people it's tits, and in Malaysia, susu is milk. So, theoretically, if you drink too much susu from a susu, you'll have to go susu. So, But susu is a funny Indian word because all Indian people know the word susu. And let me tell you something, here's the fucked up part about it. It's not a real word. You can't write it, there's no script for susu. But Indians make up words all the time. They end up in our vernacular forever. Susu is one of those words because Indians make up words based on the sounds they hear. That's where susu came from. What's he doing? Susu. Ah, susu. 
There's all kinds of words that are made up that we all know. What's the Indian word for firecracker? Fataka. See, that's not a fucking word. That's the noise they make. Fataka. That's it. That's the noise. If my mom sees two people whispering, she'll go, look, son, they're doing kuspus. <laughs> the hell is kuspus? You know, kuspus, 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 kuspus. <laughs> the Indian word for uh, flip-flops is chuppals, but the nickname, chatpats. You know why? Because when you walk in, they go, chatpat, 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 chatpat. When I was in India, they have these, <clears throat> they have these uh, three-wheeler taxis. And I was with my cousin. I go, hey, should I call a taxi? She goes, no, I will. Oi! Fatfatia! <laughs> oh, what? Fatfatia! What the fuck is a fatfatia? That's the noise they make. Fatfatia, fatfatia, fatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfatfat
Let's just say we all live to our 80. I have a theory that in your 80 years on this planet, you will have a minimum of five really great shits. <laughs> now let me explain. When I say great shits, I mean the kind that you fondly recall later in life. Not, not the kind where you sit around and go, oh my God, remember the time I blew up the bathroom? Not those. And by blow up the bathroom, my Arab friends, I don't mean... I don't mean kaboom. I mean, <laughs> when I say fondly recall, I mean the kind where, you know the kind of, where you come out of the bathroom and you feel lighter? You go in feeling full and you come out and you're like, oh my God. You, like you shit out everything you've ever eaten in your life. And not in a bad way, in a very comfortable way. Like, you come out of the bathroom like, I don't think I have diabetes anymore. I, I think I just shit my cancer out, is what I did. I have a theory that we'll have a minimum of five. But here's the, here's the thing. When my dad was alive, um, towards the end of my dad's life, he got very sick. And the doctor told my dad, he said, Mr. Peters, you're going to need to uh, increase your fiber intake. And my dad uh, somehow misunderstood that as I should have fiber all day, all night. <laughs> so my dad would literally sit there with a beer and a glass of Metamucil and be like, I'm like, Dad, what's that? Beer. What's that? Metamucil. Try it. Tastes like orange. <laughs> so my dad was having so much fiber that he was actually having phenomenal shits on a daily basis. And I'm not trying to be gross or anything. But my dad... I remember one time going to my parents' house and my dad came out of the bathroom and goes, Son, son, you should see it. It's incredible. The length of my bloody arm. It wouldn't break. It was coiling in the toilet. Coiling. I literally had to stand up. It's sticking out like the head of a cobra. Come and see, I didn't flush. Come and see, I didn't flush it. Come and see. That is disgusting, Dad. I'm going to flush it. Don't flush it. Your brother's not home. I'm flushing it. You flush it and somebody going to get a hurt real bad. Thank you very much, guys. Good night. Be safe.